Welcome back to episode two of the HJ Kingswood build. People seem to like this patinaed old wagon, Alan. Yeah, I think people just like it because it's a Kingswood and pretty much everyone in Australia has either owned one, had a relative that owned one, had a granddad that owned one. I didn't. You're not Australian, you're Tasmanian. Oh, is that different, is it? Ooh, shots fired. Damn. <laughs> and if you're from America, you don't really know what the car is, so you're excited about it too. But the 304 is fit in there nicely thanks to our tough mounts. We're ready to um, grab our Hughes Turbo 700 out from under the bench and fit the converter to it and load her up from underneath. Uh, should bolt straight up, no problem at all. Going to pull the brake system out and bin it because we're getting a whole new master booster brakes and everything from Hopper Stoppers. Um, who also supplied the brakes for the uh, Bedford. Cool. So it'll have some quite decent brakes and they will be equivalent to an AU Falcons braking system, which is probably also the only other thing that is any good on an AU other than the diff. That'd be good once this thing gets some boost, eh? Actually, I don't mind the AU engine, actually. It's probably not a bad thing. The Intex, good, isn't Pete's it? Pete's got in his um, mm. old American Fairlane. Single cam, full life. All right, let's get stuck into it. Let's do it. When we were planning this project out, uh, we figured we were going to go auto because Scott just wants to cruise in it. Um, but we didn't really want to put a Turbo 350 or a 400 in it because we it wanted to be able to like drive distances in it in, with comfort. So we wanted a four-speed auto. Um, unfortunately, you are limited in strength-wise with four-speed autos and GM stuff. Um, a 408 is a massive truck gearbox, we didn't really want to go there and it's also electronically controlled. So we spoke to Pete at Hughes and he said, how much power do you want? And we're like, oh, I don't know, let's just say 500 off the top of our head, uh, wishful thinking for a 308. Um, and he said we can either do a 4L60 or a Turbo 700. Um, the difference, main difference being this Transmission is hydraulically controlled and the 4L60 is basically a, a newer version of it that's um, electronically controlled. So this one we don't need any wiring for apart from just a single power wire to operate the, um, the torque converter clutch when it goes into overdrive. So nice and simple for an old thing like this. It's also got a speedo drive which is also handy because we can actually make a cable and hook it up to the original dash. So Turbo 700 is a renowned for being weak and so are four L60s is the old box of neutrals joke. Um, I chatted to Pete about that because we wanted to sort of clarify what why are we using it when they're when they're renowned to be weak. Um, he said yes they are weak and um, basically what they do is empty it out on the floor and th throw everything away except the case. Um, this particular trans they only use a certain year model of case because it's got a better something control system in it somewhere, like some part of it is actually better than, than others. So they use like 80, 88 to 92 or something models. Um, everything else is, is new, um, apart from the, um, the pump, which is machined and blueprinted and stuff. They modify them so they run a constant um, line pressure. Uh, one of the problems that they have with failure was because the line pressure was controlled by a kick down cable, which is connected to the throttle body or or um, carbureted in some cases, mm -hmm. and they can be put out of adjustment, which changes the line pressure, which can cause failures with them. So this particular version's got a um, constant line pressure, um, which it's basically getting fixing all the problems that they had by modifying the design completely and then, and then putting strengthened parts inside them. So um, they're actually a pretty good thing, and for this sort of application, perfect box. Just hooking up that shifter off that bloody column shift is the biggest pain it's going to be. Let's throw in the converter and put it in the car. This is our Hughes package we've been waiting for, our uh, revised converter. Why was it, was it, why was it revised again? Uh, because when Pete watched the build videos, he um, realised that the cam specs that we were using, which we probably hadn't actually communicated that well to him, uh, were too big for the um, the converter that we were going to use. Like it would have been creeping because of the idle speed and that sort of thing. So 
they knocked us up a better one or one that's more appropriate. So we'll just quickly check that our bolt pattern's correct, which it doesn't look like we can get it wrong since it's got three different ones. You know what's cool about that converter, Earl? We saw it getting made. We touched it in the States. Yeah, how good's that? We probably should have signed it or something, scratched into it. That would have been cool. Looks good to me. A little love note from Pete too. It says this converter might cause cancer. There's a pre-lube, Alan. Yeah, you don't. You don't actually have to fill the converter up, but I prefer not to put them in completely dry because there's all, all mechanical components going around in there. So um, if you fill them up too much, it just pours out inside your bell housing anyway. So. Speaking of mechanical components, what's the go with this hectic white VK in the back of there? That's like the cleanest VK in the world, isn't it? That's actually the world's best VK bonnet. Is it? Mm. So, so Dave reckons. It's like stuff of legends. Actually, Murray used to own that car. Big Muzz? Big Muzz, yeah. Really? Yeah, he, he sold it to Dave and there was some controversy about flat top pistons and stuff. It was quite the, quite the hubbub in the day. What's a hubbub? It's like a hullabaloo. What's a hullabaloo? It's like a, a big fuss. Oh. Who do you reckon would win in a fight, Big Muzz or Dave? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you have to double tap the torque wrench, Alan? No, that's not allowed. What's that? It's the Rodrigos patented flywheel stopper. Oh, Shane taught me that, mate, from Cricks. Shout yeah. out to Shane. I know you're watching. Mint. Good? Yep. We're just about to fit the transmission, but um, Woody pointed out that we may have trouble accessing some of these, depending on how close it is to the, to the tunnel. Um, the kick down cable is probably one of the obvious ones. This, this um, has a little thing poking out of the um, transmission here that you connect the kick down cable to. Uh, although this does run um, line pressure, like static line pressure control, it still requires this for um, maybe just for kick down itself, like uh, full throttle sort of uh, down changes. Um, Pete did instruct me that it does have to be used, so he's he's actually supplied us with this aftermarket low car kick down cable um, that you can sort of adjust the length of and change the ends because we've we've got a, a Mustang throttle body on it, so we'll probably have to do that anyway. So we're just going to fit this up now. Do you need that bolt that you dropped on the ground before? been fiddling around trying to figure out what we're going to do with transmission cross member Jason sent us a um, basically an un unfinished version of his uh, of the uh, 4L60 cross member that they use in the LS1 conversion kits um, so that we could position it where we wanted it um, but the factory original cross member is in good nick and it's it's very simple mod to make it fit so I think we're just going to do that um, we might hang on to this one. We've we've got something else up our sleeve that we may use it on. So we'll um, 
we'll, we'll keep a hold of it. Um, Hughes supplied us with a transmission mount as well, so we we'll use that and hang on to Jason's um, mint solid mount. Um, might come in handy for later. So we're just going to just pretty much just add a simple plate across this this cross member. It'll stiffen it up a bit and also um, meet up with the uh, trans mount and um, we'll leave yourselves a bit of a bit of movement there um, to because we're changing the differential. Um, we'll have to sort of check the pinion angles and stuff. So I'll leave a bit of bit of um, like leeway here so we can change the pinion angle if we need to or the transmission angle. Um, you never know what it's going to be. It's uh, we do, we did one in the Orange Kingswood and it's built the same way as that, but that doesn't mean it'll turn out the same way when it's got different arms and and stuff uh, holding it into the car and a different body. So let's do it. Finish this off and maybe we'll have a lemon squash. You're not going to let that paint dry first? Nope. It's exhaust paint, you don't have to let it dry. Open the door. I don't want any. Give me some. Come back next week. Where are you being? What do you mean where I've been? You're late. I just, I just can't roll straight out of bed into the shed, dude. You're gonna knock, I'm docking your pay, bro. <laughs> I went fishing this morning. Guess what's for lunch? Nothing, because mm. you didn't catch anything. <laughs> Time for fans. Are you a fan? I'm a fan of those Subaru fans, yeah. Pity they're so hard to get now. Remember you had stacks of those. What are they? RS Liberty? Oh no, not RS. They're just like... WRX. Old WRX. Need some slight trimming. Who needs a pan break, eh? We do. <laughs> Thank you.
Got our Subaru fans on the radiator. Um, or fits really nice. That bottom shroud um, extension uh, basically is, is allowing it to pull air from those, right down from those bottom uh, rows. So we get sort of maximum airflow through everything. Uh, there was a little, a bit of talk about why we bothered using this WB radiator uh, instead of just the standard bolt-in sort of um, HQ to HZ uh, V8 radiator. Uh, the reason why we're using it is because it's bigger. It's 15% larger and um, Holden obviously did that for a reason back in the early 80s when the WB came out. Um, it, it's, they, they've used a uh, cross-flow design instead of a downflow and that's because in this case of the front of this car, the tanks are top and bottom and they're taking up a certain amount of, of area. What they've done is pull the tanks out to the side where th there isn't actually anything the radiator doesn't come out that far in the, the original design. Um, so they've, they've used what used to be tank area as core area now. Uh, so it's 15% larger than the, um, the equivalent HQ to HZ radiator. Um, and I, I looked it all up. I've got an AdRad book. I go through it. I, I try and find a radiator that's going to work the best. It doesn't really matter to us whether it bolts in or not because that's not what we do. You love using different radiators, don't you? I would have used a more modern radiator if I could have found one that actually fitted. When we do LSs, I just use a VE radiator because it fits in there, but all the outlets are around the wrong way to use that. So that's why we've gone with this one. Um, Hose-wise, uh, WB on the bottom, um, straight from parts store. Uh, again, it's different. The, the layout is different to the standard sort of HQ to HZ setup. Um, that's the top hose for, for a WB. That doesn't fit. Um, I grabbed it just, in, just to see. But um, this thermostat outlet is in the middle because it's a carbureted engine, um, whereas it's here on the outside. So I grabbed a VT hose, which is what this engine's out of. And I think with just a 30 mil trim off the end of that, we'll be able to use that. So again, Standard hoses that you can just go and buy a replacement for is always a good idea. Um, sometimes we make aluminium or stainless steel hoses because we can't find something that will fit. But I think this looks better because it just looks factory and that's, that's kind of what we're trying to achieve in a lot of cases. Um, not, not making it look like a race car. We want to make it look like it's meant to be in there because that's kind of, that's harder and neater looking than it is to just make things out of metal. Um, so it's kind of, that's my preference. So we'll just whack a bit off here and hopefully it'll fit. Let's pull the brakes out, I reckon. Yeah. Do it. Where do you start? Yeah. That doesn't sound right. No, I'm missing the bolt. I just can't get the, the, the thing up in there. Got to say, I'm pretty glad you're doing this, not me. Oh, it's in my eyes again. Oh. That's what she said. There's like fiberglass everywhere, bro. It's all, it's all in your hair. It's all white. <laughs> Jerk. <laughs> How much of a wobble have you got? I don't think you're applying yourself. Bro, the steering column's in the way. No, no. Can you get me like a mega 3 8 wobble? Got it. Coming out. Yeah. It's glued on there pretty good. Yeah, it is. Been siliconed on. Bathroom silicon, only the best. I think we're done with Ted ball pit for the week. Engine and box is in, all mounted up, sitting nice, radiator's working. We've cleared house for the new brake setup that uh, Hopper Stoppers has got on its way. We'll fit up that next week. We've got a diff that we've got to rebuild down at Old Cox. 
He's going to school us on how, how to do it the right way. We'll fit that up as well. In the meantime, if you're in the comment section, let us know what you think's going in this old VK behind us. Have a look at our social media. You might see some clues there. That's all we got. Thanks for watching as always, and we'll see you next week. Did you see that dust fell on your yeah, lens? Yeah, it's horse hair, bro. Horse hair and fiberglass. Is it really horse hair? <laughs> it's probably James Hardy, blue cake uranium. No. What is it called? Blue asbestos. What? James Hardy, remember? With no. Noom. He's like a clothing brand. Mesophilioma. Oh, yeah. I know what that is. This is a clothing brand. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs>